We uncovered what insiders told us was a culture of fear at one of England's biggest and worst performing hospital trusts. I and other consultants have raised concerns about patient safety and we realised if you do that you will get punished quite quickly, quite harshly. So they will make all kinds of spurious investigations and they will try to intimidate you that way. Since we broadcast our investigation last week, we've been contacted by several clinicians at this hospital trust, both current and former, who told us a similar story, that they felt unable to come forward with their concerns about patient safety because they feared some sort of retribution. The local MP says she's been contacted too by concerned hospital staff. Many of them are from different parts of the UHB Trust, raising absolute uh, concerns with me, which were very, very distressing to see. These are doctors that have worked here for a very long time. These are doctors that are from different departments. This isn't just disgruntled doctors. This isn't just a department at the Heartland Hospital. Um, this is much more broader. This is people that have worked here 15, 10, 20 years. And this is really concerning because this is showing a culture within the organisation there where there is bullying, intimidation, and it's been far uh, wide-reaching, wide and of course it's been going on for some considerable amount of time. Birmingham and Solihull Integrated Care Board has announced three separate reviews of our evidence. The first into the specific allegations made in our report. The second is a more general review into the culture and alleged bullying at the Trust, and the third is into leadership. However, the Integrated Care Board was only formed in the summer and some of its senior team were, until very recently, senior managers at UHB Trust. If it was the board of the ICB that was going to conduct this inquiry, I'd have big reservations about that. But the important thing is will the person or people conducting the inquiry be independent both of the Trust, of the ICB and indeed independent of NHS England an improvement as well. Will they be able to go wherever the evidence takes them to look at whatever they need to look at and will their findings be made public at the end of it so everybody can see what's been found out? Those are the three important criteria in my view. There is supposedly already a structure in place to allow people to raise patient safety issues. Each NHS trust has a freedom to speak up guardian who can hear concerns and raise them with management. But the guardian has no real powers, just to listen and warn. The freedom to speak up guardian at University Hospitals Birmingham is Professor Julian Bion. His most recent report noted that a majority of staff were worried about raising concerns because they feared adverse consequences, what the report calls detriment. The process of investigation is so slow that people won't wait. And they just I spoke to Professor Bion before the reviews into the allegations contained in Newsnight's investigation were announced. The question is, does detriment occur? And um, I think there have been a, num a number of instances of which I'm... I'm aware where um, I've taken concerns to the trust and in the end I felt that the individuals who'd done so had suffered detriment. And I raised these with the trust board um, in public uh, last year and I, I, I didn't describe the individual cases of course because I can't but I did describe what it felt like to the individuals who felt they had suffered detriment. And this was very hard for the trust board to listen to. Do you feel that characterisation that we heard from several consultants and several people behind the scenes who didn't wish to be named, um, that there was something of a culture of fear? Do, do you recognise that, UHB? A bit. Not more than a bit? Well, I, I know all the individuals on, on the trust board. They don't enjoy making people frightened. But when you work in such a tense set of circumstances as we are at present. And there's so much focus on performance and so many competing demands. Fear of failure is corrosive and it's one of the biggest problems we've got because it takes away people's sense of courage, self-respect and doing the right thing for patients. The first important thing is that a Speak Up Guardian is, has got access to staff. The second important thing 
is that his or her findings are made public. The third important thing is that they're acted on. Now, the first two of those happen in relation to UHB. The third of those is much bigger question mark around that, which is why we need the investigation that we've been calling for since last week's Newsnight report. We've got to have a whistleblowing procedure that has confidence of the staff, knowing that not only will they be able to raise issues, but they will be taken seriously and something will happen. It's very clear that that system isn't working. The doctors that have been contacting me, one of the things that they have been saying is, please do not share our names, do not share our details of where we work. We are really, really worried about reprisals. The Hospital Trust has a new chief executive taking over in January and a new interim board chair who's just started in post. Some see the possibility of a fresh start. The past chair of the Trust has been extremely supportive, Harry Riley. Um, he's been rep uh, replaced uh, by uh, Dame Eve Buckland. She has already been in touch with me. She has asked if she can meet online my entire team of 30 confidential contacts and my two deputies, which is excellent. So I'm very pleased about that. The reviews of whistleblowing at UHB, we are told, will be concluded early in the new year. So far, this announcement hasn't silenced or even reassured the Trust's critics.